is Mark McDonald, uh, Vice President of Customer Success here at CoStar. And the topic of this session today is portfolio planning and management. What we're going to focus on in, in terms of the, the planning session in general, uh, we're going to start off with, uh, you know, why are we talking about this at, at this particular time? So going through what we're hearing from other customers, um, what's important to them uh, as it relates to making strategic decisions about their portfolio, uh, and, uh, and, and how we may be able to, to help with that in COSAR. So starting with the why. Um, we'll go into uh, the the how we're going to approach this as well in terms of a few of the tools that we'll be able to offer uh, and some of the additional data elements that you'll be able to capture within the CoStar Real Estate Manager platform uh, that haven't been the case up until now. Uh, and then leaving the session today, uh, your uh, sales execs, uh, customer success managers, or client services teams will be able to answer any questions about how we might uh, enable this within your environments uh, as we we leave, as we go forward. Uh, in terms of the why, um, so the, the portfolio planning topic is, is certainly um, you know, more important than ever to our customers today for, for a few different reasons. Um, obviously, given the, the state of change or the state of flux in the commercial real estate industry that you just heard from the advisory team, uh, it is critical to, to have uh, speed and access to information and, and perhaps the pace of decision making uh, across some of our customers uh, as it relates to the real estate portfolios is very critical. And, uh, and so that's certainly a, a cause for, uh, for concern and something that uh, some of our customers are reaching out with uh, and have asked for help with. Um, as our customer base has grown, we've seen the number of, or the, the M&A activity uh, across large public global organizations, uh, you know, has certainly uh, accelerated. Um, so, you know, quickly analyzing uh, portions of the portfolio what that means for you know longer term strategic decisions for either uh, acquisitions, uh, you know consolidations of certain companies or, or perhaps divesting business units is, is certainly critical. Uh, there has absolutely been an eye on, on cost savings as a result of the slowdown uh, across general business activity for some of our customers. Uh, real estate is, is no different compared to other some of other departments that's you know being asked to identify, where we may be able to uh, to pinch some pennies and, and save some dollars. So we'll, we'll touch on how that may be impacted by portfolio planning and some of these tools. And then lastly, the, the COVID-19 business impact. So we're not going to talk about the, the pandemic too much, but I, I think that underpins a lot of the, the commentary that we'll, we'll be touching on relative to portfolio planning. Um, and certainly a lot of our customers are theorizing right now about you know, what the, the future state of the portfolio looks like. So what the footprint of the future uh, you know, may dictate and certainly how some of the uh, leases and, and locations in their current portfolio uh, may impact that, uh, that future footprint decision. So these are, again, just why the, the portfolio planning aspects and, and, uh, and, and certain discussions are, are topical today. Um, when we talk about portfolio planning, so, you know, apart from the things that I've just mentioned, what, what does this discipline typically entail? Uh, you know, we may have some uh, you know, customers on the phone today that are, are not necessarily uh, having a hand in making these decisions, but uh, I think it's important just to maybe set a baseline for uh, what we mean when we talk about this. And it, it certainly cuts across the different types of uh, verticals that, that our customers occupy. Uh, so it's not just focused on an, an office or, or an industrial type of, uh, of, of footprint, but certainly uh, for any type of market that our customers may be uh, uh, competing in, uh, this applies. Um, in general, when, when we talk about the, the strategy and planning aspects, um, making confident, insightful decisions about real estate. So uh, certainly the data that you're tracking about your current locations and leases within the COSAR Real Estate Manager platform today ties into that, uh, as does uh, for some of our customers, the, the transaction activity or that deal pipeline activity, um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, plays a, a hand in this as well. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about location performance in the presentation today and how that relates to the planning topic. Um, in this case, being able to monitor that. Uh, again, this is going to be very uh, applicable to an individual customer, um, not just a, a utilization performance for, let's say, a, a corporate or office occupier, uh, but other types of, uh, of location details that may be uh, important as we're making decisions about our real estate, which could be sales or revenue figures for uh, a retailer. Uh, it could be some uh, you know, industrial or warehousing types of, uh, of elements for somebody that's occupying industrial real estate. Uh, so that location performance could have a bit of a different meaning uh, across the board. And then how do we set priorities, you know, that the real estate team is, is you know, executing on, on behalf of the business? Um, so not just documenting what our plan might be, but, but how we choose to approach it and in what order we choose to approach it. 
um, helps us both prioritize the capital that, that may be executed on behalf of the business, but you know, also might lead to you know, either a pause or uh, changing of order relative to those uh, transactions or projects that we're working on. And you know, if our customers can be successful in this today, uh, obviously this is something that's that's occurring, um, you know, pre-COVID and and not just in the current environment. But if we can get better at this, if we can improve or make this more organized, uh, we expect to be able to increase increase vis- uh, visibility uh, across the various stakeholders. Um, I think in light of the pandemic, the the various uh, uh, stakeholders in, you know, internally to organizations have have. Uh, perhaps been a little bit more uh, uh, or scrutinizing a little bit more heavily the, the state of the portfolio today. So where previously this is, may have been a business and, and real estate decision, uh, more increasingly the, the, you know, the HR teams, risk management teams, you know, other types of, of uh, departments within the organization uh, certainly have a hand in, uh, in, in are interested in the, the information relative to those decisions. Um, this will also help us establish those strategies, being able to quickly uh, report on and reprioritize those strategies for the location, uh, and then be able to track our performance against those. Uh, so hopefully this is setting the context of what this, uh, you know, the, the strategy topic entails uh, and what some customers are, uh, you know, needing a bit more help on or, or certainly applying, you know, much more time and attention to uh, in light of the current environment. Um, so how are, are we helping customers with this? What are some of the things that uh, are there today and, and some of the things that, that we're expanding as a result of this topic? Um, so, you know, certainly the, the, the strategy and the, the timely access to information is, is certainly there. Uh, but what we're trying to do um, uh, a better job of or provide more access to is that market data source from COSAR Suite or that research platform that you've heard about uh, from a few sources today. How do we appropriately take your current portfolio or your current real estate locations, and how do we create a match such that you're able to report on that location data and that location footprint from CoStar as well? How do we combine that information alongside of uh, headcount capacity or other types of location performance or utilization factors uh, for each location? Um, so we'll touch on some, uh, some strategies and, and uh, some approaches that our customers are taking. How do we consolidate this information into uh, a, a single report? So we'll, we'll talk about the, the net new product effort that's uh, creating this report. And then how do we also incorporate in, in, you know, some of those strategies and how are we reporting on the execution relative to those strat- strategies or plans um, that our customers are doing? So we're going to take a dive into each one of these. You know, what, do, what do we mean by each of these? How our customers are sourcing this today? Uh, and then again, if you're not, uh, I encourage you to reach out to, to the, the channels that I, I described previously, uh, if this is something that you are interested in. Um, so the first component is the, the research side. So, you know, Andy Thomas alluded to this uh, in his previous presentation. Uh, I promise I won't go into a, a physics lecture, um, although uh, if we thought uh, accounting was a bit of a dry topic, apologies, Matt Waters, uh, physics may be a little bit more so. So uh, well done, Andy, there. Uh, but the, the first component is, uh, is the research aspect of it. Uh, so, you know, the, the inventory of information collected from a number of different sources across, across the commercial real estate uh, uh, ecosystem and marketplace. Uh, so certainly details relative to buildings and, and, uh, and, and photos and images uh, certainly being important. Uh, but over uh, a million listings for sale or for lease, which are, you know, highly applicable to our customers as they're going through and making those decisions relative to their in-place footprint. That's tracked and captured by the CoStar research team in a number of different ways. Uh, so, you know, certainly the, the calls into, uh, you know, landlords, building owners, brokers, uh, commercial real estate practitioners, I'm sure a number of people on the call today have probably gotten a call from a, a CoStar researcher over time. So that's certainly a component of it. There's also a number of, of different automated approaches to the access and capture of this data too. Um, you know, tenant canvassing and, and uh, you know, automated data collection for things like uh, retailer, you know, store locators uh, on the internet uh, and other types of uh, postings of information all going into trying to gather the availabilities and, and changes relative to the markets and submarkets that you have a presence in. So we mentioned a, a number of different details on, on properties today. Uh, we also mentioned the, the analytics component, which is zoomed out a bit uh, from each individual property and, and displaying detail for each of those. Uh, and then certainly that both historical and, and forecasted or expected forecasted information based on those econometrics, some of which you heard about in the, the previous session. So all of that information is captured and, and what do we have the ability to do today? So in, in your current environment, 
Uh, a number of customers have already enabled this. You have the ability to create a, a, a match, meaning your address at 123 Main Street is linked to the data in CoStar Suite. And once that match is created, a number of different pages are returned that allow for a subset of users in your environment to be able to access this information and make decisions relative to the portfolio. And to date, uh, since this was initially enabled, the primary use case has been around the lease renewal decision. Uh, so it's taking a look at your current location, determining what COSTAR research has captured relative to the occupancy of the location in terms of the, the aggregate square footage, what's vacant, what's leased, what those percentages look like. Um, uh, try to uh, determine what available space is currently being marketed by the landlord. Uh, if it is a, an, uh, an, an unoccupied, you know, multi-floor building, as an example, or even an you know unop unoccupied, uh, you know, single tenant uh, space that's on the market, uh, and then also provide what the the historical leasing activity looks like at that particular location. So pr trying to give you historical detail relative to uh, the tenants that are in the space, the square footage that they've leased, uh, and if the uh, asking rents are known, you know, what that detail uh, looks like so that you can see, you know, what the, the landlord and, and tenant may have come to terms to in that location previously. Um, on a go forward basis and something that was just released uh, a few months ago is an additional tab relative to market analytics. So this expands the use cases outside of just the, the previous renewal decision and now encompasses a little bit more around that portfolio planning. So you're able to see not just what's occurring within your location, but what your peer group uh, uh, inventory and analytics look like in the submarket, meaning if you are in an office location in a central business district, what does your submarket look like or in a relatively close geographical footprint to your location? And then what does the market in aggregate look like uh, for a similar type of space as well? So it's trying to, to put in place from an analytical point of view what that detail looks like. Um, you know, for things like asking rents, availabilities, we heard a lot about the, the subletting of square footage and, and how that's, uh, you know, increased drastically market by market. So that information is there. And in not just a renewal decision, though certainly applicable there, um, also very important as it relates to what you might do with a location uh, relative to consolidation or other real estate decisions that you may be making. Um, there's also a number of other use cases on the uh, the CoStar matching side as well. So, you know, being able to perhaps factor in how you might negotiate certain concessions in your leases. Um, you know, you, if you were to uh, expect to terminate or consolidate or, or sublease, that that's certainly uh, a component there. And uh, some of our accounting users are, are accessing this information uh, to support their fair market value analysis relative to uh, their spaces and, and to support or to back up certain accounting assumptions and accounting calculations that are there. Um, and then certainly for uh, the separate types of uses relative to, you know, leases in net new locations that don't exist in your portfolio today, uh, you know, being able to, to leverage a, a full coast or suite subscription in order to see that. So certainly that, that is, uh, you know, something that is, uh, Andy talked about being a little bit further down on the roadmap for us relative to connecting the, those two CoStar experiences together, but certainly a, a, a lot of valuable uh, information and, and data at your fingertips, even in, in the, the current component. So that was the, the first case of, you know, wrapping up what that, you know, general detail looks like relative to the market research and how you may be able to take advantage of that today on a location by location basis. And we'll touch on what's next relative to the planning uh, reporting uh, in just a second. So certainly the, the underpinnings of COSAR research being, being very important and very applicable. Um, the second component that we'll talk through and that we'll pull through on this planning report is what does the location performance look like? And I'm, I'm using a, a typical type of uh, you know, office scenario here relative to the headcount and capacity of a location uh, initially. So in this case, uh, our, we have a number of customers that are loading uh, their, their headcount. This could come from a number of different places uh, from, let's say, a Workday or a PeopleSoft type of uh, HR engine uh, that exists within the enterprise. Um, this could be sourced from a, a third-party space planning platform if you're using separate technology to, to manage that. 
or this could just be uploaded on a recurring basis from a spreadsheet. So we'll talk through some of the, the methodologies that are relative to getting this in, um, but automated or you know more manual uploads, the idea is you're loading that within the CoStar platform on a recurring basis. Um, and then certainly that's, that's applying to some of the uh, different types of space utilization and, and different factors that uh, you heard about previously relative to what that future footprint looks like and what the current state is, is you know, absolutely needed in order to determine uh, you know, what the, the future footprint is, is going to look like. Underneath headcount and capacity here, I, I do also have sales data listed for our retailers. So uh, for a, a non-corporate type of location, we are certainly feeding in some, uh, some data relative to, to that. So you can see what you know, historical uh, trends look like relative to sales. And that also underpins some other type of, uh, of you know, accounting calculation and sales reporting aspects. Uh, that also is a, a common feed for our non-office occupiers or our retailers. So the research component, what this detail looks like for space utilization or for the performance of a location uh, independent of asset class, um, all of those, uh, those are a few of the underpinnings into what our location or lease strategy is going to be. And both documenting this strategy as well as the expected capital to execute on it is another best practice that we're communicating uh, across our customer base. Going into this uh, individual location strategy review uh, are a few different things. One uh, is that uh, lease expiring. So, you know, certainly into the future, that's going to be more a reactive type of decision, but, but absolutely an input into what your strategy might be. Um, does the location fit the needs of the business? So a little bit more qualitative here, but determining what the, the you know, the business fit for this location is. Um, you know, a, a great example pre-COVID was, you know, a, a, one of our customers had a, you know, their, their corporate HQ was, was located in a, um, one of the, the further out suburbs. Um, they were having, you know, trouble, you, you know, retaining and, and, uh, and recruiting top talent, you know, coming out of some universities based on, you know, where their footprint was. That was some of the feedback that they were hearing from their individual candidates. And they determined to pick up corporate HQ and, and move it a little bit closer into the, the CBD. Um, so again, that, that was more of that, that qualitative decision relative to business fit and business need. Um, but certainly something that we expect to, to impact that location strategy review on a go forward basis as well. Uh, we just touched on the utilization data, so I'm not going to go through that uh, too much, but obviously an input into the location strategy. Uh, the cost performance, this is the your current lease structure or perhaps what's been negotiated in an option and how that cost performance in current lease terms may compare to the current market or what's available in current market. Uh, so, and that is again an input, you know, what those deltas look like and how are we able to determine those, uh, certainly something that's listed there. And then finally, what other options might I have negotiated in my current contract? We obviously focus a lot on the renewals as they're the most prevalent, uh, but do we have any uh, early terminations or break notices for our, our international contracts? Uh, what other type of, you know, expansion or contraction options perhaps do we have uh, negotiated in the lease? and how those might factor into the location strategy review uh, certainly could be important. So a number of different factors going into, you know, what our go forward plan looks like. Uh, but once that is arrived at in, in the recurring planning sessions between real estate and the business, where are we capturing that? You know, how do we have the ability to document that? And hopefully, how do we not, uh, you know, cram too many spreadsheets together in order to arrive at that conclusion uh, and to report on that on a recurring basis? Um, so a number of those different things, starting off with the, the research side for, for that COSAR research data, um, then going into the, the, the utilization components uh, of the application, the strategy itself, um, combining those two sources in a planning report is, is what we're attempting to do here um, in order to, again, eliminate some of those spreadsheet gymnastics in one hand where we have the data relative to your locations and leases, uh, that current COSAR real estate manager information um, that's, that's underpinning the application. Uh, being able to bring in either from one of those uh, you know, HR, ERP types of sources or just a spreadsheet upload and being able to, to view that um, employee headcount and capacity information or, or that location performance as your business dictates. Those are certainly two things. And then uh, again, over on the left-hand side, uh, a, a reportable pull, so not just going into one specific lease and clicking on the building for 123 Main Street, but being able to make reportable CoStar's market analytics as it relates to those, uh, you know, asking rents, you know, vacancies and availabilities, again, both at the property, the submarket, 
uh, and the submarket peer group, so like kind or uh, your cohort types of buildings uh, in, in the geographies that you occupy. So all of this detail uh, is going to be available in, in one report so as to, you know, again, uh, reduce the, the spreadsheet complexities that you may be um, experiencing today. Um, it will be a, uh, an addition to the standard system reporting package uh, for the subscribers that are licensing our, our portfolio management uh, solution. And the typical types of system report filters around portfolios, hierarchies, geographies, and, and options are going to be there. We'll be able to do some conversions back to square feet and dollars or a measurement and currency of your choice for our international customers. And also being able to isolate this report on a specific asset class uh, as it's defined in CoStar, you know, kind of underpin this, this planning topic and our customers have the ability to slice and dice their portfolios based on these individual factors. Um, so we're certainly excited about this. Uh, it's in, you know, I'll call it a rough beta version today. Uh, we've talked to a, a few customers conceptually about it. Uh, but again, if this is something that you uh, see your real estate teams and, and the real estate leadership and, you know, in concert with the, uh, the business leaders, uh, if you think this will be helpful relative to, you know, setting what that portfolio plan looks like, again, uh, you know, reach out either to your customer success manager, uh, account exec, or, or support channel uh, in order to get this enabled. And then maybe just to talk through the, the workflow a little bit relative to, you know, how our customers are going through and, uh, and licensing and, uh, and excuse me, and, and Im importing the data relative to making this useful. Um, the underpinnings relative to some of the utilization metrics certainly hinge on that uh, headcount and seat count location for the, the office portfolio. There's a component of uh, the, the data in the report that will have utilization metrics um, specific to uh, cost and, and uh, area on a per square foot basis, but also cost per head or per seat. So you get some utilization metrics there. Um, also, you'll have some cost efficiency data that is listed in that particular report, um, such that you can see the, the cost to the business for your lack of utilization in a location. So it's a little bit of a different way to look at this, but, but certainly can be helpful from a planning standpoint. But in order to do that, certainly importing that, that data relative to the headcount and capacity is important. Being able to combine that with your current portfolio information, so that's just the, the location, uh, lease abstract data that you're capturing relative to, to rent, uh, to square footage, and to options today. Um, we also have a, a new concept uh, described as a flexibility score for each lease that's returned in this report. Um, the default here is a, a fairly simple type of uh, scoring mechanism. Uh, if the lease is coming up for expiration in the near term, and then based on the number of different types of options, renewals, and others that may be included in the lease going into the future, uh, the higher the flexibility score. Some customers have, have pointed to this as, you know, we have a, a pretty thin real estate group and we want to be able to bubble to the surface, the areas where we can go uh, take some action and, and make some quick decisions, but also have a number of different decisions that we could make or could potentially need an answer on. So that flexibility scoring is a, is a component of this report. Um, the strategy side will allow you to, to prioritize, you know, what those plans look like. Uh, and then certainly if there's any, uh, you know, cost savings relative to that consolidation uh, or to the deltas in rent compared to market, if you happen to be over today, um, that's where we're hoping to point you in that right direction and being able to compare your current lease structure relative to cost per square foot and remaining obligation compared to that CoStar uh, market analytics component uh, to be able to, to see what that additional information might look like um, as we go forward. And then we mentioned the, the strategy and that planning aspect of it, um, being able to, uh, to, to dictate not only uh, the, the individual component, but also some other qualitative information relative to that strategy, um, helpful in the recurring executive reviews that a number of our real estate teams are, going, uh, are, are doing with the line of business leaders on some recurring basis. We've heard from a number of customers that it's a you know, quarterly type of planning activity. Um, being able to document this is, uh, is certainly important and that, that's certainly something that a number of our customers have asked for. Um, and then over on the right-hand side, you'll see some additional metrics that we're working on. Again, we've described these previously relative to uh, you know, things like the, the utilization and, and certainly the, the average square feet, uh, both on a you know, per seat and, uh, uh, and then average square feet or average dollars on a, a per square foot basis being a uh, component of the reporting as well. Um, so, you know, to, to summarize, you know, certainly our, our customers are, you know, in, in need of, 
the this this particular data uh, so that the, the tenant occupiers and, and being able to have uh, solutions connected not just their their real estate data relative to their locations and leases but also being able to access on a real-time basis um, the the commercial real estate market analytics um, you know have that combined with you know some of the other details relative to uh, their internal analytics and, and combined with uh, their, their location performance information uh, in order to go through and and certainly help to drive cost savings, you know, optimize the portfolio and, and make their appropriate decisions relative to, you know, what to do with, with each of those locations. Uh, and this is our, our, our answer, if you will, in the near term to be able to, you know, combine the, the work that you're, you're, you're hard at work doing and, and managing relative to the data in Coastal Real Estate Manager today and continue to leverage the tools and data available by CoStar Suite uh, in order to, to make that a more effective and, uh, and streamlined experience.